Welcome to the Walk Talks podcast, a resource produced by Southland Christian Ministries located in Ringgold, Louisiana. Our purpose is to provide you with daily devotions so that you can faithfully grow in your relationship with Christ each and every day. We hope these truths will be an encouragement to you as you hear from God's Word today. Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Luke twenty-two forty-two. Welcome back to Walk Talks. I'm Scott Bratt from Southland, sharing today's devotional from God's Word. Today's verse is an amazing, life-changing verse. A verse that is a very powerful prayer from our Lord Jesus that really should shape every prayer we pray. I got married last May, and we're coming upon one year of marriage, and it's been wonderful, and we've grown in our love for each other. The big news in our house is that we are expecting our first child this May. So Lord willing, when you come this summer, there'll be a little baby brat at Southland. So with my wife being 31 weeks pregnant, she is very busy growing a baby and getting all the stuff ready for him, getting the nursery ready. We've already had one baby shower and where she grew up, and we've got two more in the next two weeks. God has really blessed and has taken good care of us. And my one main part to play in all of this, in her pregnancy, is supporting her. And by support her, I mean she gets what she wants, okay? When we're um, at the store and we're only going to get one carton of ice cream and she actually wants orange sherbet, which isn't even ice cream, instead of the delicious, wonderful cookie dough ice cream, my job is to say, well, let's get what you want. When it's 9.30 at night and I'm ready for bed and she wants to go to Walmart to get some fruit, it's my job to get up and take my wife to get some fruit. That's my part right now. I get to say, it's not about what I want. It's about what you want. I want what you want more than I want what I want. In our verse today, God the Son is praying to God the Father, and he says, not my will, but thine be done. Wow. The humility and submission in this prayer is amazing, and we need that in every one of our prayers. We need to submit to what Christ submitted to. Christ submitted to the Father and to the cup. And so let's discuss what that looks like. I don't even I don't even know where to go into the mystery of how what was going on within the Trinity here, how Christ's will was different than the Father's will. Um, It's just, it's one of those mysteries. But this is what I do know, is that he submitted to the will of the Father. Because the Father is so good. He submitted to God's goodness. Psalm 31, 19. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Our Father is good, completely. He is all goodness. James 1.17, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. His goodness is amazing. He is completely goodness. Psalm 34, 8. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. We can be submitted to God when we see his goodness. But not only his goodness, but also his knowledge. Psalm 147, 5. Great is our Lord and of great power. 
His understanding is infinite. Infinite. That's what the verse says. Without end. It is unable to be measured. We have no way to quantify his understanding. Our knowledge is so limited, but his is infinite. Romans eleven thirty three. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. We have no right to think that we know better than God. His knowledge is past finding out, is infinite. Isaiah 55, 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's will is what's best for us. He knows what is best and he wants what is best for us because of his goodness and his knowledge. God's will is best for us. I can say that without any shadow of a doubt. Because of who God is, his will is best for us. But that doesn't mean it's going to be easy or that there's not going to be difficulties. Because quite frankly, easy and not difficult is not what's best for us. Jesus submitted to the Father, but he also submitted to the cup. Now, I've heard different messages trying to explain what this cup was and, and why it was that Jesus was asking for it to be removed. I don't, I don't know. I don't truly understand. And, and the scripture doesn't really elaborate on what this cup is. But this cup is a symbol for what was to come. That is clear. And because we know the rest of the story, we know what ended up coming to Jesus. From this point on, Christ feels pain. Lots of pain. The crucifixion. He prays this prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is Luke twenty two forty two. This is in the Garden of Gethsemane, right before he gets arrested and then gets tortured and then goes to the cross to die for our sins. And on that cross, he takes the sin of the world and the Father turns his back on him. I don't understand that mystery either, but I know he felt pain. I know he felt loneliness. I know he felt embarrassment, and he endured death. The beauty of all of this is that he knew this was coming. Jesus knew this was coming. He knew this was his cup to drink from, his cup to bear. He knew this was his future, and he was submitted to it because it was what's best. Praise God. What a terrible thing for Jesus to go through but it was the greatest thing to ever happen in the world. Still to this day, our calendar is shaped, every day is shaped by the fact that Christ died on the cross. Think about these verses, James 1, 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. It is a joy to fall into a temptation or a trial or a test. It should be a joy. James 1 goes into how that works because it is what's best for us. 1 Peter 4.12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. We have a cup. There are trials in our future. Romans 8.28, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. We must want what he wants more than we want what we want. And with this, in every request, we will live a humble life where our walk Thanks for listening to the Walk Talks podcast. We trust that what you've heard today has challenged your walk with God. 
It is our prayer that through this podcast, every listener would strive to become more like Christ and faithfully live for Him each and every day. Join us next time, and God bless.